Hello everyone and welcome to Math 220A Mathematical Logic Lecture 12 Quantifier Elimination We already know that every formula phi is logically equivalent to a formula psi in what is called Prenix normal form. That is, Psi is of the form Q1 x1, Q2 x2, etc. through Qn xn chi for chi a quantifier free formula and each qi either an existential or a universal quantifier for all i between 1 and n Existence of a formula Psi of this form equivalent to a given formula Phi can be shown by induction on the height of the formula Phi. And uh, then, in general, we have that the number of alternations of quantifiers exists and for all provides a good indication about the complexity of a formula and also of a set defined by this formula in a given structure For example, most statements in mathematical practice only involve a couple of alternations uh, of quantifiers and um, in certain particular structures, such as the arithmetic of the natural numbers, so n with the operations of addition, multiplication, exhibits uh, what may be called Gödelian phenomena. where the more alternations we allow in a formula, the more complicated the sets uh, defined by it become. Uh, in particular, they become undecidable and even of higher Turing degrees. On the other hand, in, com in concrete examples, we have that sets defined by quantifier free formulas are easier to handle and often can be described in some concrete terms uh, which uh, is not available for sets defined by arbitrary formulas. For this reason quantifier elimination results are very useful and often um, open the way for a deeper understanding of the theory uh, under consideration as well as its models. So in tame structures or theories every formula is logically equivalent quantifier free one and we will see some examples of this 
but uh, before we will uh, study some of the properties uh, when this uh, some of the criteria for when this happens in general and in some concrete examples the first theorem that we will consider today provides a semantic equivalent to the syntactic property uh, for all formulas in a given number of variables to be logically equivalent in a given theory T to formulas without quantifiers. So let T be an L theory. Assume that N is a natural number greater or equal than 1. And we assume that phi of x1 through xn is an L formula. Then the following two properties are equivalent. One, there exists a quantifier-free formula. In the language L, say psi of x1 through xn, such that phi and psi are equivalent in the theory T, and 2, let M and N be two models of T and assume that A is a common substructure of both M and N then for any tuple A bar of length n, the same as the number of variables in the formulas in property 1, so for any such tuple of length m, one has that m satisfies phi of a bar if and only if n satisfies phi of a bar. So the first property is uh, a syntactic condition which guarantees that phi is equivalent to some quantifier-free formula psi and uh, the second one is semantic and it expresses a certain relationship between models of the theory T and uh, their substructures. Before proving the theorem, let us make the following remark. Note that in the assumption of the theorem we have n is greater or equal than 1. So in the situation when n is equal to 0 and phi is a sentence, we may consider phi as a formula, phi of x, with a single free variable x. and apply the theorem to phi of x in order to find a quantifier-free formula psi of x which is equivalent to phi of x In the theory T, for example, the sentence exists y, y is equal to y of T is equivalent in T to the formula x is equal to x. So, in particular, note that 
if the language L has no constant symbols in it, then there is no quantifier free L sentence just for the because of the syntactic reasons for forming sentences in a given language. In this case, when we uh, assert the existence of a quantifier-free formula, psi equivalent to a sentence phi in what follows we will allow for psi to have a single free variable. So we'll mean the logical equivalence in the sense uh, outlined in item one. So we view sentence as a formula with a single free variable and then we claim to be able to find another formula in a, with a single variable which is equivalent to it in T. Another way to deal with this uh, for a correct formulation of uh, the meaning of quantifier elimination would be to introduce uh, the logical symbols of truth and false into the language. Always require that uh, language, our languages contain a certain particular constant symbol. But here we will stick to the convention of uh, viewing sentences as formulas with a single free variable and then claiming equivalence in the sense of equivalence, uh, logical equivalence of two formulas with a single free variable in a given theory T. Let us begin the proof of the theorem. First we prove the implication 1 implies 2 which is the easier one. So note that if A is a substructure of B and psi of x1 through xn is a quantifier-free formula and a bar is a tuple from the base set of the substructure A of length n, then A satisfies psi of A bar if and only if B satisfies psi of A bar. So the truth value of quantifier-free formulas is of course preserved uh, by extensions of structures. Hence, if M and N are models of T with A a common substructure, and if phi of x1 through xn is an L formula, which is equivalent in T to the quantifier-free formula psi of x1 through xn, then for uh, any tuple A bar in A to the power n, we have that m satisfies phi of a bar if and only if m satisfies psi of a bar. This is because m is a model of t and phi is equivalent to psi in t. Now psi is quantifier free, so we have that m satisfies psi of a bar if and only if a satisfies psi of a bar, because A is a substructure of M, 
but then we also have that. This happens if and only if n satisfies psi of a bar, because n is an extension of a, and psi is quantifier free, which finally is equivalent to n satisfying phi of a bar, again because n is a model of t, and uh, phi is equivalent to psi in t. So this shows that m satisfies phi of a bar if and only if n satisfies phi of a bar, uh, which gives us the implication 1 implies 2. Next we show the converse implication, 2 implies 1. Consider the set of formulas. will denote as gamma of x bar and we let it consist of all formulas of the form chi of x1 through xn quantifier free L formula such that T implies that for all x1 through xn, phi implies chi. So gamma is the set of all L formulas without quantifiers that are implied by phi in T. Next we choose new constant symbols C1 through Cn pairwise distinct and consider the theory gamma of C bar which consists of all sentences of the form chi of C1 through Cn, substituted in place of the free variables x1 through xn, where chi ranges over all formulas in the set gamma of x bar, in the language L prime, consisting of L together with these new constant symbols C1 through Cn. Now we claim that T, together with all these sentences from gamma of C bar, has phi of C bar as a logical consequence. Let us denote this claim by star. Now proof of the claim. If star didn't hold, there would exist a structure m prime satisfying t together with gamma of c bar together with the negation of phi c bar where m prime is a structure in the language uh, l prime then we let a prime be the substructure of M prime, which is generated by the interpretations of the constant symbols C1 in M prime through Cn in M prime. And let us denote the base set of this substructure by A. So this is the substructure, let me repeat, of M prime, so it is in particular an L prime structure, generated by the elements C1 M prime through C M M prime of M prime.
Now we can note that this whole set of sentences, gamma of C bar, is contained in the simple diagram delta of A prime, the structure generated by the interpretations of the constant symbols in A prime, as we have that by assumption M prime realizes all the sentences in gamma of C and A prime is a substructure of M prime and by the definition of gamma all of the sentences uh, in it are quantifier free. Hence uh, the truth in M prime for these sentences is equivalent to the truth uh, in A prime for these sentences. So we have that gamma of C is a subset of the simple diagram of uh, this substructure A prime. Next we show that the theory sigma, which would take to consist of T union the simple diagram delta of A prime union phi of C bar is consistent or has a model assume not then we would have that T union delta of A prime has the negation of phi of C bar as a logical consequence because uh, if sigma has, doesn't have any model then the negation of a uh, phi of C must be a consequence. Now we have the following observations. Every element of a, the base set of the substructure A prime can be written as an L prime term. So it is of the form T interpreted in N prime uh, evaluated on C bar for some term T. Second, we denote by delta C bar A prime the set of quantifier free L prime sentences in delta of A prime. Then we have that T union delta of A prime is a conservative expansion of the theory T together with delta C bar of A prime. Indeed, this follows because it is an expansion by definition we see this because every new uh, element of the language um, of the simple diagram of a prime which now contains constant symbols naming the elements of a prime uh, so each such constant symbol can be represented by a term in the language L prime not involving all these new constant symbols naming the elements of A prime as we just observed and we have proved earlier that expansions by definition are always conservative then in particular we have that T together with delta C bar of A prime has the negation of phi of C bar as a logical consequence because uh, by definition conservative expansions 
have the same consequences in the base language as um, the uh, the original theory, as the base theory. So T with the uh, simple diagram of A prime has the same uh, consequences as T with the delta C bar. And uh, we already know that well, we're assuming towards contradiction that uh, it implies the negation of phi of c. Hence, by compactness, there exists quantifier-free formulas in the language L psi 1 of x bar through psi k of x bar for some natural number k such that we have on the one hand t implies the conjunction overall i from 1 to k psi i of c bar implies the negation of c bar and we also have that the simple diagram delta of a prime implies the conjunction over i from 1 to k psi i of c bar and let us denote this formula the conjunction of the psi i by psi of c bar Both of these uh, claims follow by compactness. Since we have um, that T together with delta C implies the negation of phi of C. Okay, but now note that the constant symbols CI do not appear in T nor in the formula phi of x bar or psi of x bar then using the simulation of constants by variables lemma we get that t has as a logical consequence the sentence for all x bar psi of x bar implies the negation of phi of x bar by combining the two uh, of these uh, claims and then it follows that T implies for all X bar phi of X bar implies the negation of psi of X bar note that the negation of psi of x bar is quantifier free and according to t uh, it is implied by phi hence by the definition of gamma of x bar we have that in particular the negation of psi of x bar belongs to gamma of x bar so we have the negation of psi of c bar belongs to gamma of C bar and hence we also have that the negation of psi of C bar belongs to the simple diagram delta of A bar of A prime which provides a contradiction To our definition of psi of c bar which uh, is a logical consequence of delta of a prime and is quantifier free so it is uh, 
on the other hand, has to be in delta A prime. So we get a contradiction, which uh, then confirms that the theory sigma consisting of T together with delta of A prime and phi of C bar is consistent. Okay, so now we return to this assumption. So sigma has a model which we denote as n star and we also have that the L reduct n of n star contains an isomorphic copy B prime of A prime as a substructure because we have that in particular N star is a model of uh, the simple diagram of A prime which is contained in sigma and we know that any model of the simple diagram of a structure A prime in this case contains an isomorphic copy uh, of, of, of that structure as a substructure. So this gives us B prime in this situation. And so up to identifying B prime and A prime as they are isomorphic, we have constructed two models M given by the L reduct of L prime and N of T which contain a common substructure A which is the L reduct of A prime and uh, such that if we set AI to be the interpretation of the constant symbol CI in M prime then we have that N satisfies phi of A bar which is uh, A1 through An and also we have that M satisfies the negation of phi of A bar but this is a contradiction to 2 because uh, M and N have a common structure and the tuple A bar is from that common structure A uh, but the two st structures, N and M, give uh, different truth values to it. So this means that we have proved the claim star, which I remind, says that T together with gamma of C bar has phi of C bar as a logical consequence. But then, by compactness, we get that there exist some formulas, xi1, C bar, through xi m, C bar, for some natural number n, all in gamma, of C bar such that we have that T implies that the conjunction over all I from 1 to M of Xi I of C bar implies Phi of C bar so this is just compactness applied to the condition star now as above this implies
that we have that t implies that for all x bar the conjunction over all i from 1 to m of xi i of x bar implies phi of x bar so this again follows by uh, the simulation by uh, of constants by variables lemma but also for all i we have that t implies for all x phi implies psi i just by the definition of um, the set of formulas gamma of c so they're all of this form and each uh, psi i of x bar is moreover quantifier free so we get the conjunct that the conjunction implies phi and that phi implies each of the conjuncts so combining we get that t implies for all x bar the conjunction over i from 1 to m psi i of x bar is equivalent to phi of x bar and since each of the xi i's is from gamma of, C, uh, of x bar so in particular it is quantifier free so the conjunction is also a quantifier free formula and so we have obtained that uh, in t phi is a equivalent to a quantifier free formula uh, in the language l so this uh, concludes the proof of the theorem Next, we're interested in theories in which all formulas are equivalent to quantifier-free formulas. So for this, we have the following definition. Let T be an L theory. Then we will say that T admits quantifier elimination. or QE for brevity and sometimes we want to stress in the language L if it's not clear from the context if every L formula is equivalent in T to a quantifier free L formula first lemma uh, tells us that to, in order to show that T admits quantifier elimination it is enough to show that we can eliminate one existential quantifier at a time so assume that for every quantifier free formula phi and any variable x there exists a quantifier free formula psi such that the formula exists x phi and the formula psi are equivalent in t then T admits a quantifier elimination proof let psi and psi prime be two formulas equivalent in T which we will denote by writing psi is equivalent in T to psi prime since we have that the negation of psi is equivalent to the negation of psi prime we also have that the formula exists x psi is equivalent to exists x psi prime and we also have that chi and psi 
is equivalent in t to chi and psi prime for any formula chi, then we can argue by induction on the height of the formula psi and uh, then uh, the statement of the lemma follows by considering only formulas in Prenex form which we know up to logical equivalence we can assume any formula to be of this form and eliminating, eliminating one quantifier at a time uh, in such a formula. Then we have the following theorem. Let T be an L theory and assume that for any pair of models M N of T for any common substructure A so a substructure both of M and of N and any quantifier free formula phi of x0 through xn if there exists a bar in the base set of the common substructure A and B0 in M, a, a, a singleton in M, such that the structure M satisfies phi of B0 a bar, then there also exists an element C0 in N such that N satisfies phi of C0 a bar, so assume that this holds, then the conclusion is that T has quantifier elimination. Let us remark that the converse of the theorem is also clear. Any theory which admits quantifier elimination satisfies uh, the hypothesis. So let us now prove this. Assume that A is a common substructure of M and N such that both M and N are models of our theory T and let phi be a quantifier free formula and then we let chi be the formula exists x0 phi by uh, the assumption of the theorem we have that m satisfies chi of a bar if and only if n satisfies chi of a bar for every tuple a bar in a to the n it then follows from our previous theorem that psi is equivalent in T to a quantifier free formula but then by the previous lemma it tells us that uh, we can eliminate the single existential quantifier hence T has QE this provides uh, a simplified criterion for verifying that a particular theory has quantifier elimination, which we will soon uh, see applied uh, in some examples. But today we will finish with one final proposition, which characterizes elementary equivalence and the elementary substructure relations for theories with quantifier elimination. So assume that T uh, is a theory with quantifier elimination then we have the following two claims let M and N 
the models of T with A, a common substructure, so importantly not an elementary substructure, just a substructure, then M is elementarily equivalent to N. Note also that we are not assuming T to be a complete theory, in which case elementary equivalence would be trivial. So T might be uh, an incomplete theory, and we, but with quantified elimination we still get uh, the elementary equivalence in the conclusion. And the second part, let M, N again be two models of T. Then if M is a substructure of N, then also M is an elementary substructure of N. So the two notions of substructure coincide for theories uh, eliminating quantifiers. Proof 1. This is a special case of the easy implication 1 implies 2 in uh, our earlier theorem from today. Indeed, any sentence phi is equivalent in T to a quantifier-free formula psi of x with at most one single variable x let a be a common substructure of m and n which are both models of t but a is just a substructure then for any a an element of a we have that m satisfies phi if and only if m satisfies psi of a, if and only if a satisfies psi of a, because it is a substructure and the formula psi is quantifier free, if and only if n satisfies psi of a, for the same reason, if and only if n satisfies phi, because uh, phi is equivalent to psi in any model of t. And 2 uh, is a direct consequence of the previous theorem this concludes our discussion of quantifier elimination uh, for today and uh, next time we will see some applications of the of this result and some other examples thank you very much for your attention